Hi, this is your host, Swapnil Bharatiya from Arlington, Virginia, and welcome to TFR Security, a show where we talk about cloud native and open source security. And today we have with us once again, Ron Nixon, Vice President at Polyverse. Ron, today we are going to talk about Linux security. We are going to talk about specifically Freakout and uh, Dreambus botnet, which are targeting Linux uh, operating system. First of all, can you quickly explain what are these botnets? So they both are, are traditional botnets. And, and what I mean by that is they're, they're used to attack, they're used to attack an entire environment across a, a spectrum of, of devices. Um, where Dreambus is kind of targeted against Linux in general. Um, uh, Freakout is specifically targeted against the, the TerraMaster uh, data system, the, the data storage environments. And so um, bo both of them work as modules. They work as launch platforms into something a little bit more nefarious, a little bit more sinister. Um, you know, like, so for instance, if you were to take uh, Freakout, you know, it can be used to gather information on the environment. Um, it can be used for um, art poisoning, um, opening up reverse shells. And so it, it's pretty nasty in its own right. Um, and then Dreambus is actually designed to help with crypto mining. Um, right. So it was designed to take advantage of your system, scan your environment, say, oh, look, here's here's all the cool systems that I can take advantage of for my crypto mining um, and then hijack those systems. But it's not really difficult to make that transition from a crypto mining botnet to a DDoS botnet or something else, right? So it's not not, not, not hard to do. If you look at these botnets, they expose a serious uh, problem with Linux system. Not exactly problem, but kind of misconception that is there that, you know, just because it's Linux, it's open source, it's fully secure. First of all, no system can be fully secure. You can make it more secure, but nothing is secure by design. Uh, so can you talk about uh, this misconception and yeah, there are some factors that does make Linux a bit more secure. One could be, you know, uh, of course, uh, user base. You know, if you look at desktop, you know, it's less than, you know, 1% market share, you know. If you look at servers, what kind of incentives user will have to, when you target Windows, you know, you, you are getting access to a user. So can you talk about some of the factors that kind of make Linux kind of uh, more secure, but that misconception leads to a serious problem because then you don't take security seriously. Can you talk about that? The thing that makes Linux powerful and also makes it vulnerable is the fact that it's so adaptable, right? So I can take Linux and do just about whatever I want with it. And so like you could argue that Microsoft, so as an example, Microsoft will say that I am concerned about your resource consumption and making sure that I'm leaving resources available to you to run applications. And, but you're still dependent on Microsoft to make those changes and you have some degree of control, but not really. And the same thing goes for Mac, right? They're, they're no different in that space. But on a Linux platform, running whether I'm running Ubuntu or CentOS or I'm running it like an IoT device where I've got the core of it being Linux, I can make those changes and make those adaptations however I want. I've got a lot of flexibility with that. And so people get this misconception that because, um, that because Linux is a community derived product, that all of those eyes on it um, kind of make it invulnerable to to being, you know, uh, to it, it makes it inherently secure. And um, and you got to kind of look at the community though in itself, right? So um, although you would like to assume that all developers are taking security in mind as part of what they're doing. Um, really their, their purpose though, is to get whatever function they want to get done as a developer, right? So what am I, am I, you know, making RAM more efficient or am I making it so that I can stack more applications and run more applications at the same time? What it is I'm trying to do with that code, uh, with those changes in that operating system. But, and then, and then you have these peer reviews for, you know, you have these review processes that go through before th something's released for production, but it doesn't mean that everybody's holding it to the same security standard or everybody's looking at it for the same different functionality. You know, if you walk onto a car lot and, you know, you ask somebody, you know, the color of the car, you know, it might be some variation of blue, but, you know, somebody might say green and somebody might say purple, right? You're going to get different variations. Not everybody sees things the same way. And so, so the adaptability of Linux makes it secure or, or makes it makes it makes it adaptable and, and in a way can make it secure, but it also means that my source code is out there for everybody to have access to. And if I want to build an exploit for it, I can just find the source code. You compare it with uh, Mac and Windows uh, and the kind of flexibility or you know opinionated platforms. 
I mean, given the choice, I will pick Linux any given day, and that's by more of my because yes, there are uh, there are those risks there, but those risks don't come from Linux itself. It comes from how we look at it. So most of the problems come if you work with the Linux kernel community. They really work really hard to keep things secure and patched. But uh, I, I think it's. I may be quoting it wrong, but that's Linux's law that given an eyeball, eyeball, all bugs are shallow. But then we also discuss, you know, with L, uh, with Archie's sudoer bug, which was there for almost 11 years now. Nobody saw all those eyeballs were there. But just imagine that even if the bug was there, no damage was done. If it was any other proprietary system, you cannot even imagine how much, you know, uh, compromises m would have been done. That. Yeah, so 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 despite all these things, the fact is that Linux still remains, you know, the, the power that you talked about. All we need is to remove, first of all, you, that misconception, uh, make more awareness, because problem doesn't come from Linux, problem comes from how users treat it. And that's when, you know, to, to kind of make it user foolproof, there are technologies like polymorphing where, you know, it doesn't really matter. So can you talk about that? Okay, it's a powerful platform. It's, it's, it's relatively secure platform, but how polymorphing adds another layer of production because you kind of create unique instances of operating systems, you know, each uh, is different. So you create the incentive that is there for a hacker to attack your system. I mean, it's you have to target individual systems. You cannot just write one and copy the clones and compromise those systems. So I just gave a kind of summary of polymorphing, but if you can just kind of elaborate on that. There are versions of Linux out there that people see as, as hardened, quote unquote hardened, but those are really driven towards um, security check blocks type kind of thing. You know, kind of like the way the Department of Defense has their security implementation guides. Um, you know, like SE Linux that's that's been published by the NSA. If it's secure as long as I set up my settings properly, but even then, it's still hardened at the opera. It's it's still hardened from settings. And so, what what Polyverse does, what Polymorphing does for that operating system is I I, I take that 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 operating system and I scramble it at the binary level, and, and actually, um, so like Dreambus, for example, actually takes advantage at the binary level, right? So it, it's it's designed to take advantage of the system at the binary level. Um, so I, I take that, that operating system and I scramble it so that when an exploit comes in from the outside, it's not seeing a recognizable environment. And so botnets inherently take advantage of that standardization. They want everything to be the same so that they can take advantage of more and more systems. A botnet of one system is not a botnet. It's a it's a bot, <laughs> right? Um, and so if I want to truly take advantage of that, I've got to be able to hit systems that are similar. Well, polymorphing, you know, we take it, we scramble it. We're creating a unique version of that operating system. So none of them are the same. So if you had the, you know, even if you had some ability to take advantage of that one system, the system next to it, you know, in order to create your botnet um, wouldn't be available to it because it wouldn't be the same. And so that exploit would just die on arrival. Um, you know, so for both of these, um, for both Dreambus and Freakout, we would we would kill them on arrival because they wouldn't be able to get hooks into the operating system. You have, if I'm not wrong, collaboration with companies like SUSE uh, to protect their uh, Linux-based operating system. Uh, but SUSE Linux is just one of the many uh, Linux-based operating systems out there. What is your plan to, because if you look at uh, Linux ecosystem, of course, Canonical Ubuntu is there, Red Hat Linux is there, CentOS is there, now Red Hat Steam is coming out. So uh, are you planning to work with other Linux vendors as well? Because it's not a problem of a single vendor, it's a problem of ecosystem. Without a doubt, we are. Um, so we actually have agreements in place with, with Canonical um, and SUSE. Um, we're working towards, uh, you know, we're working towards Red Hat um, to establish a, a better relationship or a more firm relationship with them. Um, and we also currently support Debian, CentOS. I mean, we support everything just about that's out there um, today. And we have the ability to do custom adaptation for like IoT devices that are using a kernel or a portion of an operating system. 
uh, out of Linux. Ron, thank you so much for not just talking about these two botnets, but also uh, security of Linux in general. You know, as we agreed, and you know, of course, Linux is the most powerful, uh, more, more, much more secure platform out there. But we still need another layer to, to as you mentioned, it's the users that <laughs> that become the problem, not the system itself. So we have to user proof. And even even in the cloud native world, when we talk about uh, security, there are basically two factors. One is bugs and you can never get rid of bugs second is misconfigurations or the human error and that is where the serious problem is and that's where uh, polymorphing comes into the picture and you know help uh, customers uh, make their systems more secure uh, thanks for this discussion and i look forward to talk to you again thank you thank you very much